Hello, it's me, Veda, again. 5G antennas. Let's get the why right first. Here is why we need them. The cellular traffic predictions for 2021 of Cisco imply that a complete re-architecting of devices is needed. Here are the 10 additional requirements of 5G antennas as compared to the 4G or the LTE antennas. Number 10 The frequency For 4G and LT The frequencies of 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1.8 GHz, 2.1 and 2.6 GHz along with wideband or multiband operation at 1.7 to 2.7 GHz are used and for 5G it's the TV wide space that is used along with 3.5 GHz and about 10 GHz wideband bandwidth Number 9 The beam pattern For 4G and LTE, the main types of beams used are the sectoral beam and the omnidirectional beam. For 5G, the beam that is used is a multi-beam highly directional beam. Number 8 The type of cell deployment for 4G and NT, it's the macro cell, and for 5G, it is the small pico or the femto cell. The pico cells are all usually inside the building, the small cells are between the buildings, and connecting the suburban area also are the macro cells. Number 7 The power handling capability. For 4G and LTE, it's usually a moderate power handling capability that is required. For 5G, a high power handling capability is required, especially in massive remote cases. Number 6. The form factor. For 4G and LTE, generally a large form factor is used. And for 5G, a small form factor is used, especially in the cases of millimeter wave communications. Number 5. The tilt plane. For 4G and LTE, elevation tilt is supplied. You can see the tower there and a beam pointing outwards tilted towards the houses. Whereas for 5G, this becomes largely redundant as the scans are done in both the principal planes. Number 4. The scanning plane. 4G and LTE. Generally, azimuthal scan is done. Whereas for 5G, both the azimuthal and the elevation scans are targeted. Number 3 The antenna gain. For 4G and LTE, it's a moderate gain of 10 to 12 dBi, but for 5G, it's a high gain, often exceeding 20 dBi. Number 2 The number of beams. The 4G and LTE have single or dual beams, whereas in 5G there are multiple beams which are casted simultaneously as shown in the figure. And finally, down to number one, the most important requirement of 5G, namely the reconfigurability required in 5G antennas. For 4G and LTE, there are generally no reconfigurability involved in the antennas, but for 5G, the reconfigurability becomes an integral part of the 5G antennas. And finally, here is a recapitulation of the 10 factors necessary for the design of 5G antennas. It goes without saying that all of these 10 factors operate in synergy towards the 5G antenna realization. So, thanks for your attention and stay tuned for the next video introducing the conception process behind the design of antennas for 5G. Until next time then.